Tonight I've got a BIOS upgrade to do. Now I'm at 1.1b, as you can see on the left, we've got the IPMI interface, or web UI. And you can go into maintenance and do a BIOS update there if you have an $18 license key or a, or a single requested uh, eval version of something called SUM, S-U-M, Super Micro Update Manager. But I don't have that, and this is a borrowed machine. So I'm not gonna do it that way. I'm gonna do it kind of the old school way, and that is through the local interface. Local interface being, you know, a remote iKVM view of the VGA output of the server. Okay, so that's what you're seeing on the right. On the left, Windows 10, on the workstation, on the right, the remote server we're gonna update. So instead of doing it over the web, we're gonna, I'm gonna download something called Rufus. And it's gonna prepare the bootable USB media for me. See the screenshot here? It's exactly what we want. Download portable. This USB boot media, we're gonna stick DOS in there. And then the BIOS update files, and then boot it from the server on the right. Okay, so that's the basics of what we're gonna attempt here. Say yes, now these defaults, I don't really need it to check for updates, say no. Notice no install was needed. And by default, we've got the settings we want. Uh, MBR partition scheme for BIOS or UEFI should handle both types. However, for BIOS upgrades, I have found there can be problems if you try to leave it in UEFI mode on the right. So we're gonna leave that setting alone, but if you have trouble with UEFI mode, I would suggest you turn off secure boot on a you know, Surface or whatever you have, go to the BIOS. Um, Surface might've been a bad example, but whatever machine you have, go to legacy mode just to get the DOS booted. Notice it says it's gonna put free DOS on there, so I'm ready, I didn't change anything, just click start. It warns me it's gonna destroy all the data on my USB media that I put in there. I'm okay with that. And it's extremely fast. So in four seconds we have ourselves bootable media. How do I know? Well, let's have a look. Yeah, you can't really tell from there, but There we go. So those files are hidden. Uh, but that's DOS for you. All right, what else do we need? Well, the D drive is gonna boot DOS, but we need the BIOS files, so. However you wanna get it, here's 1.1c, multiple download sources. So typically you're gonna to go to your motherboard to make sure you have a compatible motherboard or server. This is a, this is a, one of the types of machines. Uh, we can do it actually, I'm gonna do a SYS. 50, no, SYSE 200 AD. So the type of server I'm on, uh, or that I'm about to upgrade, is right here. And there, you see the motherboard matches. It's a six core. So you go to the BIOS, it says 1.1c, grab that zip, it makes us accept this, save it, and now open it. So we've opened up the zip archive, control A to put everything in the clipboard. Head over to the USB drive, that's now DOS bootable media. Paste those files, it will not take very long. Right click and eject it. All right, it's a little miffed. So I wanted to point out, uh, well, let's see if we can get it to eject. First of all, hang on a second. Oh well, you've seen that before. It's obviously done with uh, writes at this point to the USB media. So I'm gonna pause the video for a moment because I've got to eject the USB drive from the Windows 10 workstation and put it into the server that's seen on the right here. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. So boot, I'm in dual mode, but if it was in UEFI mode and that's how the system might be when it ships to you from say, as a bundle from Wired Zone or in alone, um, from Wired Zone, uh, it may end up in UEFI mode, which is actually better for Windows t uh, 10, well, more important, Windows 2016 with Hyper-V or VMware ESXi 6.5 or 6.1 or, excuse me, 6.0, whatever you got. All those are UEFI compatible. Good idea. Two terabyte drive support for boot volumes and all kinds of good stuff. But for booting legacy media like this, you probably want to drop back to dual mode. Okay. Now there is one of the save settings and exits. All right, there's one other setting that would be CSM support. So I'll just mention uh, CSM can be 
right here, compatibility support module. If you have trouble with whatever system you're on and you still can't boot off of this DOS boot media I just physically inserted in the machine, well, CSM would be your other area to look for potential cause for why you can't successfully boot. All right, so I gotta get ready on the right here to hit F11 for Supermicro. F11 is going to pick an alternate boot device just for this one boot. This is a one-off DOS boot we're trying to do here. I'm trying to do here. And once we boot DOS, we have to type a command to start the firmware flash. And it takes like six, seven minutes. It takes a while. That's basically it. So it's not terrible, but it's a little bit painful. you got to pay attention to what you're doing. Like right now, i got to pay attention. Hit F11. There we go. Looks like I got it on time. And... Uh, we're ready. I'm ready. All right. Certainly don't want Windows Boot Manager. We don't want UEFI version of SanDisk. Let's just go with straight SanDisk. The best likelihood of booting right to a DOS command prompt. It worked. Flash. Or I can do caps lock on. There you go. X10. I start typing the name of that BIOS file. Hit tab. Fills it in for me. Hit enter. And away we go. Now it's just a waiting game. I'm going to, I already have videos of uh, other flashes that I've done before in the past. I'm probably just going to fast forward through this, you know, boring part until we're done with the BIOS upgrade. And then I'll check for success or failure. So I'll be back when this is done. It's, uh, okay, 11.43. Let's see how we do here for time. Okay, so you'll notice it's very clear. System must power off to have the changes take effect. And I talked about that in my other uh, video when you do this over IPMI. In a lights out data center, a distant data center, when you don't have physical access, you're gonna wanna do it over the web UI. But today, I'm trying to show you when you have local USB media, right? And when they talk about power control, I read a few times you don't wanna just do it here. I'm literally gonna yank the power cord out. So I'll be right back after yanking the power cord out and I'll be taking the USB media out because I'm done with that as well. So I'll be right back. And yeah, it took about, uh, was it six minutes or so? All right, I removed the power cord for about 15 seconds, plugged it back in. Naturally, this is a frozen screen. It's not gonna do much good because the machine was unplugged, meaning IPMI also went off. All right, this screen, if I hit refresh, is gonna fail as well because the machine's still booting. But when it springs back, we should see a new BIOS version here on the web UI. And of course, booting the machine on the right, we should see a BIOS version as well. So, there is a step. Uh, in my case, I'm going to go back to UEFI mode because that's what I want to be. You may need to do the same step. So, once we get back in, you can see, you know, there's a few steps here involved when you're doing a BIOS. you got to kind of pay attention to the details to be successful. It's not really hard, but a little bit time-consuming and a little bit finicky about how you go about doing it. So I'm back in shortly. Now I'm back in. Here we go. And since we're not... Actually, do console redirection from. Um, oh, never mind. Can't do HTML5 interface on this one yet. Just, I don't have the uh, proper IPMI um, update on there. All right. So you may want to look into also updating your IPMI if needed or if instructed by support. Uh, I'm not sure what I did wrong there, but here we go. All right. The thing rebooted on me. So after an IAP BIOS update like that, the machine, everything reboots. That's normal. If I had a local VGA cable hooked up to it, you would see that. So just pointing that out, basically it's like a new machine and it's finding its memory and uh, reconfiguring itself and then rebooting after it finds the RAM. So now it should act normal. I get right back in to here and I'm ready to hit the 
delete key to get into reconfigure the BIOS back to UEFI mode, and then go back to whatever operating system I had. And on this particular uh, test machine, I believe that was Windows Server 2016. All right, so I'm in the home stretch. Almost done with this whole procedure. Notice on the left, I'll point with the mouse, 1.1c. So we succeeded at getting done what I wanted to get done. Now it's a matter of seeing if we get the machine back to where it came from. Entering setup. So at the very beginning of the video, I had shown you where you change modes. I was in UEFI just before I record the video. And I'm just trying to simply return there. Back to UEFI. F4, save and exit, say yes. Screen looks all fuzzy because we rebooted and restarted everything. Let's crank that back to good quality. So it's a local network. All right, so now in 30 seconds or so, when the BIOS is done booting, we should see my operating system come up whatever was on there, like I said. Now, the alternative is this way. You know, how to upgrade Supermicro ZND over web UI. Again, that's out there. I think it's a little less safe, meaning you better have a robust network connection and you don't want it to go down in the middle, but it has the luxury of being able to be you know, done remote and doesn't have that power cycling step that I just mentioned. So just pointing all that out. Okay, over on the right, I'm not going to hit any keys, just going to let it boot, and we should see the operating system start to come up. I may have nuked the drives. Oh, there we go, Windows. Automatic repair. Yeah, I moved some drives around earlier. So that's it. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, and for visiting Tinkertry.com.